There are all kinds of chocolates with one form dating back to 1900 BC. Chocolates become one of the most popular food types and flavors in the world. The culinary possibilities involving these magical cocoa beans seem endless. Today we're visiting a local confectionery that has over 20 different kinds of candies. Assorted chocolates, bourbon balls, good old fashioned cold cream. It's hard not to be happy at a candy store. Let's go check it out. Old Kentucky Chocolates makes about 200 tons of chocolate each year and use it in a multitude of delicious ways. They dip fresh fruit like strawberries and grapes and they also enrobe all kinds of goodies here like bourbon chocolates and sea salt potato chips, which also happens to be a bestseller thanks to the tasty idea conceived by Old Kentucky Chocolates founder Don Hurt. I'm here today with the wonderful Don Hurt who is the owner of Old Kentucky Chocolates Wow, I had no idea this place was so big. I mean, do you get that response a lot? Yes, um, when people take tours and go through the back, they say, oh, I thought this was just a shopping center and a store. It is so expansive. I mean, you've got the whole showroom up here with all kinds of, of merchandise and old Kentucky products, but then you go back there, I mean, you've got a shipping room, you've got an enrobing room, <laughs> you've got every kind of room. Yeah, and of course, we have our kitchen where we do all the cooking and and of course preparation and, and storage. Uh, no one knows how many for all the holidays, the storage that we have to have. Sure, you even have a molding room, right? For all the molds, yes. which is quite a big thing. Yes, we uh, do a mold. So of course this being the horse country, why we do a lot of horses and, and everyday items and pops and so forth. Well, how did you get into this business? You've kind of been around cooking all your life, right? Yes, uh, I guess it all started from uh, getting called back to the military in 61. A lot of my friends uh, here in Kentucky, there's 3,100 of us, got called back and I was fortunate to work in a large mess hall where we fed 4,500 people per meal and I baked the last uh, uh, six months and then got into the bakery business, McGee's in Frankfurt and then it led me here to Lexington. Well and you, you kind of were doing double duty there, right? You had the bakery and the uh, candy and we chocolate business. started the candy about six months after the, the uh, bakery in Frankfurt upstairs and made a few items until we moved to Lexington in 1969. Well and now you have three locations. This is your flagship store, but... It is and, uh, and this is where the factory is and we make all the merchandise and, and of course take it to the other stores. You know, you've got all these great new, really expensive machinery that's all brand spanking new. But then I know there are some, some old machinery you had acquired from someone, a famous Kentuckian, yes. a colonel as a matter of fact. Well, well about 30 years ago we, uh, we were making the uh, cream candy for the Kentucky Fried Chicken. And uh, so they wanted to, to get out of the candy business. So we bought the machines and then we made it for them for a few years. And of course we were continuing to making that candy. Uh, the Colonel's uh, uh, mother loved cream candy and, and he wanted to have a candy shop for her so she could have all the cream candy she wanted. So uh, it was located in Danville and um, we have some of the old uh, tin cans that some of the people will recognize and, and of course we have changed to a different container. We've got all copper pots. Uh, some companies use stainless steel but, but it, it's even heat all the way up through the kettle and you get much better cook. Well, and, and the thing that I thought was really neat is you've got your what you call your chocolate car wash. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And they are piped in actually right, I mean talk about fresh, it is made and, and everything right there and then it's piped in yes. to yes. the car wash. Yeah. The, in, the enrober is about 100 feet and it's a 24 inch belt as we call it in the industry. And uh, the cutter is a 16 and we just that's as big as we need right now. But of course strawberries and grapes and things are put on by hand and as many as you can get on there and as many as the girls can take off. Sometime, they're fast too. Yeah. We were watching them, they, they, they know what they're doing. You pick up speed, you know, <laughs> or you better, or you'll be like uh, Lucy, you'll be on the floor. You right, know, or, or in your mouth. Or, yeah, or in your apron. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. We have two new uh, melders that are, uh, are computer controlled and as, uh, as the chocolate is kneaded into the enrober, well, the electric eye tells it, it pumps it over automatically and and then we can switch over from dark to milk in just a few minutes. And well, I know the tours must be popular with school groups and, and other people too. Yes, um, we have tours at 10 and 2 every day and just drop in. And then of course schools and so forth, we set them certain times and, and so forth and, and different ages of kids and how many people come with them and so forth. 
Beach. Well, and I know there's one lady who's been here for a while and she's gonna give us a tour, I think. Not all of the equipment is brand new and modern. They have a nice mix with some of the same old fashioned machines and candy making methods that have been around for years. Like their famous pulled creams, which uses the very same recipe and equipment Don purchased from Colonel Sanders himself. This special formula is cooked in the same copper kettles that are over 150 years old. Not only can you have a connection to the Colonel, but you also get to experience your very own I Love Lucy moment on their Candy Factory Tour. Okay, so tell me, you are the woman for the tour, I understand. Yes, ma'am. My name is Cheryl. I've been here 25 years. I do the main tours. You're gonna see pool creams, like where they are made in the kitchen. In the molding area will be like molded items. Then you come through to where the enrober line is where the candy actually goes through the chocolate, comes out the other end. You will see the packing area, where Rose, the lady that does our packing, has all the assorted chocolates set up. And then that's pretty much the end of the tour. Do you get samples? You can get samples, <laughs> and the ones of us in here at work, we're allowed to eat anything that oh, we want to, man. so. Where's an application? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm okay. ready for the tour. Old Kentucky Chocolates is just one of a few candy shops that actually allow people to tour where the factory workers are. Plus, you actually get to sample the candy fresh off the assembly line. Coming up after the break, we talk more with founder Don Hurt and try our hand at making some pulled cream candy. It's all coming up after the break. Today, we're getting our fill of all things sweet at Old Kentucky Chocolates on Southland Drive. This building was once a Kroger store and boasts 18,000 square feet of space. This location is their flagship store, but they have two other locations, one in downtown at the Lexington Center and the other in the Lansdowne Shopping Center. Although the company's been in business since 1964, it continues to grow thanks to founder Don Hurt. Now, how do you come up with the different candies? I know that you've got some old, you know, tried and trues, but you're always coming up with something new. Well, you, you know, I, I take a lot of magazines and I look at a lot of articles. I watch a lot of Food Channel and see if I see something that, that I can blend in uh, for old Kentucky chocolates. The new thing on the block is, is truffles with ganache and so forth. And some of them have lots of cream in them and butter and they have a very short shelf life. So we try to, our ganache is made differently and it has a long shelf life for our bourbon uh, truffles and the bourbon truffle that has the uh, black forest that has the cherries in it. Sure, well and it also has a generous helping of Jim Beam, That's which right. you're an exclusive yeah, maker yes, of Jim Beam yes, products. Yes, uh, we, we use uh, Jim Beam and uh, we use, uh, uh, sometimes we use uh, maybe a little bit more than 100 proof and it makes them delicious. It gives them quite a punch. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, and tell me how you became the kind of exclusive with Jim Beam. That's an interesting story. Well, uh, back probably in about 1966, Mr. Uh, Jeremiah Beam and his wife stopped in the bakery over in Frankfurt and uh, on a Saturday and uh, wanted to know where I was and they bought some candy. And I was using another bourbon at the time and he said, uh, why, why don't you use Jim Beam? Well, we were. Louisville was the home of Old Foister, which is what we was using. And so he left his card and he said, call me, and I did. And he invited me down. He was about 65 years old. He said, I want to take you a personal tour of the distillery, and he did. And we purchased uh, Jim Beam for 50 years. Yeah, you've got a big bottle of it back there, and you've yes. got lots of cherries, and they're just yep. soaking they're, in that yeah, goodness. They're <laughs> aging, and, and, uh, and we won't sell them before it's time, as they say about wine, you know. That's right. Well, and they go in and they get a nice candy coating. Yes. And they go down um, the enrober. We run them through what is called a pan, and uh, uh, we take uh, uh, fondant, and then we take the uh, bourbon uh, and cherry juice and mix it and put uh, an enzyme in it, which is called uh, amphotase, that breaks down the sugar crystals. 
and uh, after and we spray that and they pick up and they get so round and then uh, right size and then we run them down the rover and we, we dip them twice because it's easy to have leakers as we call them and, uh, and in about seven or eight days those sugar crystals breaks down and you have the juice. Oh wow. Well, and you have a lot of bourbon still in there too. Oh yes, we have some bourbon <laughs> and of course it uh, evaporates out. But, uh, uh, but in, the, in the bourbon truffles it doesn't evaporate like it does in the cherries. Mm. Well, they are quite tasty. Thank well, and I know I noticed back there too you had some Himalayan salt. Yes, um, that, that is a little story. About 10 years ago we did potato chips and and chocolate and they didn't sell. So about three years ago, I saw where you know, uh, uh, sea salt has become a big thing in the country. And I said, let's try some sea salt on some potato chips. And we did, and they sold quite well. So I researched it a little and found that Himalayan pink sea salt is the number one salt in sea salts. So uh, we purchased that and we use it and it's been very successful. Well, yeah, tell me how many like pounds of that you've First sold. First year we sold 12,000 pounds. <laughs> yeah. We're really proud of that. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Well, and something else that you do in large quantities are the strawberries. I mean, yes. particularly at Valentine's Day, you have to have, what is it, 24-hour shifts? We work uh, two days, 24 hours continuous. And uh, so we do about uh, 15 or 20 an hour. And uh, they work two shifts. We go through about 2,500 pounds of chocolate. We can melt uh, 3,500 pounds is what we have the capacity of. And of course, you know, we can do it every 24 hours it melts down. That's amazing. Yes. So how many flats of strawberries do you think you go through for a Valentine's Well, we went Day? through 650 flats of strawberries and 100 and something flats of grapes. That's and true, then, you do the grapes too, yes, which is really yes, good. Yes. Well, I'm excited to take a look at the store. I might sample a few while I'm back you there. You sample all you like. Yeah. <laughs> Bring your kids to sample too. Oh, they'll be they'll be sure to take me up on that. Yes. Well, thank you so much. I'm excited to look around. This candy shop does have many ingredients that make it a success, like tried and true methods, fresh local ingredients, and people who are passionate about candy. They also have a niche in the fundraising market where they've sold roughly 3 million fundraising candy bars. Schools not only like selling the candy bars, but they also like bringing classes here for school field trips to see candy being made. Like their famous pulled cream candy, which is as fun to watch as it is to participate. There's no shortage of sweets sold here and you can find one for almost any occasion at their 5,000 square foot candy store. Their shelves are overflowing with not only sweet treats, but also loads of other specialty gift items. One stroll down these aisles and you'll see why people from miles around come looking for that unique one-of-a-kind gift. It's hard not to have a good day when shopping for candy. With loads of confections and a factory tour, Old Kentucky Chocolates will bring a smile to anyone's face. Make sure and add it to your local traveler's list.